You're listening to the Holy Hot Mess Mom podcast. I'm Heather, and I like to treat this podcast like we're just old friends sitting around on our jam jams with no makeup, a messy bun, and probably some sort of bodily fluid on our shirt from a child. In this show, we chat about homemaking, simplifying mommyhood, Jesus, and everything in between. This is a place where we embrace that life can sometimes be a crazy, beautiful, hilarious mess. I want to give you the encouragement, support, and some practical tips to help you thrive even when some days you might feel like you're riding the Holy Hot Mess Express. So grab a cup of coffee or wine if it's been one of those days. Relax and let's chat. In this episode, we're going to be talking about joy. And I just want to talk about for a minute, what joy is and what joy isn't. And when it was Gaudete Sunday at church, I really went on this like tangent, like, wait, what's the difference between joy and happiness? And I came to the conclusion through all my, my Google searching, you know, my Google PhD, that joy is not happiness, even though they are used very often interchangeably. Joy is the faith, hope, and love that we have in Christ you know, Christian joy. And therefore we have that faith, hope, and love with each other. And so there's a way to cultivate joy in your home, even if your home is not always happy. And we're not always going to have happy days. That's like a total given. But at the end of every day, we can be filled with joy for our home and our blessings and God and our kids and our husband, right? So how do we as homemakers this is kind of what this episode is about. It's like, how do we as homemakers achieve that joy in our home? You know, how do you cultivate that? Because two points, newsflash, if you live in a structure where you and other people live, or just you by yourself, you are a homemaker, you are making that four world structure, a home for people to live in. And the second newsflash is we as the women often set the tone in our home. Like, what's the phrase? If mom ain't happy, nobody's happy kind of thing. So if we set this tone of chaos and anger and frustration and rushing, that's how everybody's going to be. And it's going to be this perpetuating cycle. But if we can set a tone of joy with faith, hope, love, peace, all those beautiful things, then that's going to be a place that your kids don't want to run off and always play at their friend's house. They're going to want to be in this home that is joy filled. So how do you reach that? You know, how do you get to that point in your home? How do you stop the yelling and make that a place that, you know, for me, I I want my husband to come home and help me every night. But I know that if he's coming home to a wife that is just like complaining and yelling and angry every day, it's like, why would he want to come home right at five if he can drag it out to 545, you know, something like that. So we're just going to jump right in, put together like a little tip list to up that joy level in your house. So number one, I say is create family spaces that are uncluttered and joyful. So the number one way to do that, and this is always how I start anything in homemaking is you have got to declutter. You've got to get rid of stuff that is overwhelming your brain. And even if you don't think it's overwhelming your brain, it is does the same thing to kids. The more stuff we have in our home, the higher our stress levels go. There's an actual study from UCLA that says the more clutter in your home, the higher women's cortisol levels are. And when I'm stressed, I'm not a happy mama. So what you got to do is you have to go through and be essential in these rooms. And you know, you don't have to touch your husband's stuff, whatever, but walk into your living room and say, what is essential to the purpose of this room? Things that are not essential need to go. And that way you can establish this ground zero, this bare space with nothing but the essentials that you can bring the room back to bring the common spaces in the home back to each and every single evening so that you're waking up to a peaceful house, not waking up to a to-do list. That's kind of my number one tip. Number two is put Jesus reminders in every room. And this one, it's like, you can put a crucifix in every room. You can, there's some, I will link to some awesome, super affordable Etsy businesses, um, and small businesses, one studio Sen, And what is the other one? Oh, just love prints. There's, there's so many, and there are these beautiful, affordable prints that, you know, you can even find digital things that you can just print out yourself and put in a frame. But when you're walking around that house and you're about to yell or the kids are really frustrating you, you can look up and see Jesus 
and be like, okay, I need to set the tone for this. However, this interaction is going to be. One of my favorite things is I have a quote from Mother Teresa, just a tiny little frame right next to my dishes. So I don't hate doing dishes, but I'm one of those people that just gets soaked every time I do dishes. Like, I don't know what my problem is, but I'm always soaked, you know, from like my belly button to my chest. So it drives me a little bit nuts doing the dishes. And I do dishes at least four or five times a day. So what I did is I put this quote from Mother Teresa and it says, don't wash the dish because it's dirty. Wash the dish because you love the person who will use it next. And if you apply that to everything in your life, don't wash the laundry because it's dirty. Wash it because you care and love about the person who needs to wear it. You know, don't scrub the floor because it's dirty. Scrub the floor because you love the babies that are going to crawl all over it. You know, that principle is something that can keep those Jesus reminders in your head and keep that joy throughout the day. Even when you are at your wits end with your toddler or your teenager or whatever it is. Tip number three is to clear your calendar. So I've got a free printable on my blog and it's time blocking. And if you've never heard of what time blocking is, basically it's a blueprint of your week. So you're going to look at this Sunday through Saturday week and you're going to block in everything that you need to. So I always prioritize sleep first. You know, when is everybody sleeping? And then I add in the non-negotiables, like we have to eat three times a day. Uh, For me, non-negotiables are naps because they are still sacred and mass. Then I add in the things that I really like to get done every day, but can flex if they need to. And for me, that's working out and the commute to and from working out and homeschooling, except for our co-op day. That's Thursday is like, I can't move that, you know? So you put these solid things in your schedule, like sports or choir, religious formation classes, and then you can look at your white space and you can say, I have no white space. Like, no wonder I can't keep my house clean. There's no white space for me to be able to just be home. You know, you don't have to be occupying your kids all the time. You can say, go play. You know, this is the time mommy does chores or whatever it is. So for us, I know like Thursdays are crazy busy. So I curb the chaos by prepping like a mad woman the night before and having everything ready to go, as well as I always do crockpot meals on Thursdays. Like, that's a way that I was able to bird's eye view, look at my week and say like, oh, there's no way I'm prepping and making anything on Thursdays. It's too crazy. So this gives you this visual for when you know you need to cut the crap out of your life if it's sucking your joy. Like, it's great if your kids are in taekwondo and football and soccer and they take music lessons and they do all these things but if it is sucking your joy out of your life then you are showing nothing to your kids then that all those things are a burden to you you know as hard as you even try not to you have to have white space to clear your head and to get things done that you need to get done during the day you need that white space where you don't have anything scheduled Space where you can get your stuff done or space where you can just relax for a minute so that you can get all your stuff done so that at the end of the day, when the kids go to sleep, you can actually have a relationship with your husband, which is going to translate into this joy filled home because you and your husband have a relationship. So clear the calendar of all the things that you don't absolutely need to be doing and make sure that you have white space. Tip number four, and this one was hard for me to like wrap my head around when I heard somebody suggest this because, you know, I just kind of do my thing. (laughs) Like my husband comes home and dinner's ready and whatever, but I had my own ideas and my agenda in my head. And I finally, this is tip number four, sat down and talked with my husband about his ideal nights and his ideal home atmosphere. And having that discussion is something that I don't think a lot of people have, but it's really important So I basically said, would you rather come home at the end of work? You know, because I'm the one home with them. This is a different conversation a little bit if you work outside the home or whatever. But would you rather have the house be perfectly clean and no dinner on the table? Or would you rather have dinner on the table and the house just a tornado? And he actually surprised me because he was like, oh, I'd totally just rather you have dinner put on the table so we can all eat and nobody's hangry. And then like, after everybody goes to bed, I'll just help you clean it up. 
you know? And I thought, oh, so now I don't have to feel guilty at the end of a crazy day if I don't quote unquote get everything done. Because I know that like, that's just not our priority. Our priority is trying to eat around 5.30, 5.45 and getting everybody to bed and anything else can wait. You know, if I haven't gotten it done for the day or the laundry or whatever, both of y'all should list some stuff out that kind of gets you frustrated around the house and then stuff that you just love. Like, I just love when my kitchen counters are clear and when the toilets are shiny and clean. My husband loves when the house smells good and when the food is ready whenever he gets home because he and everybody else in my family gets super hangry. So when we had this conversation, my husband said he even likes whenever I do my hair it makes him happy because he can see a confidence boost to myself. Like I carry myself differently. And so then I'm able to be like, you know what, on a crazy day, like I'm going to make a priority for showering and doing my hair for my hubby instead of making sure that I have dusted the ceiling fans or whatever. And then I can have joy at the end of the day, knowing that I did the things that are bringing joy and happiness to everybody else in the home. And I don't need to do everything. And so that's kind of what that conversation is about is like, if, and when I can't get everything done in the day, because you never will be able to, what should I prioritize? You know, like for him, if, and when he can't get everything done in the day, he needs to prioritize going to work and making a paycheck. Like that's his job, you know? All right. Tip number five, create some solid morning and evening routines. It's, controls the morning and the evening chaos. So I'm going to have an episode coming up in a few episodes with some tools to help you create like some kick butt morning and evening routines. But if you look at what you can do in the morning to make the evening go much smoother or what you can do in the evening to make the next morning go much smoother, then you're going to cut like the, the decision fatigue out. It's going to become this routine. That's just like, okay, before I go to bed, I make sure that the diaper bag is packed and in the car and my gym bag is packed and in the car and I have everybody's clothes picked out for the day. If it's a day we have to leave the house really early and I've got paperwork and whatever for a doctor's appointment that I have to do tomorrow and everything's all set. Dishes are done, floors picked up and everything's tidied pretty, you know, just like surface tidy before I go to bed. That way, whenever I wake up, I'm not waking up to a to-do list. You know, I don't have to wake up and say, oh, okay, well, we need to go get in the car, but before we can get in the car, now I got to get everybody dressed, pick out their clothes and get the baby's diaper bag packed and everything like that. I can cut all that, all those decisions and all that time by just doing it the night before. So we'll have a whole episode on that, but I'm telling you, create yourself some morning and evening routines that work for you and your family and try to stick to them as best as you can. Tip number six for the joy in your home is take the burden off of yourself a little bit by delegating and teaching. Sometimes it takes some time and effort up front and that's fine, you know, and it also takes letting go a little bit. Like I fold short shirts a specific way and I wish that everybody folded shirts my way, but if they don't, you know what, who cares? The shirts have been folded and they've been put away. Like every night when I'm done with the one load of laundry a day, both the kids, the two and a half year old and the five year old come into the laundry room. We alligator chomp our laundry and they go put it away in the room. And some days it's not put in the right drawers. And some days it's just thrown in there. And I kind of folded for absolutely no reason, but you know what? They're two and a half and five. Who cares if they have wrinkly clothes? And then that's something I don't have to do. I fold it and I just leave it there. I let the kids fold the towels and the, and the rags because who cares how the rags are folded? You know, I had to let go of some of that. Tip number seven is light some candles, diffuse some happy scents, and get some decor in your house that brings you joy. Like if you have something hanging on your wall that you don't love, take it down. You know, you don't need to have decor for decor's sake. You need to have things on your wall and some happy scents going on the air so that you are happy and joy filled being in that space that you're going to spend all this time, like 27 hours a day, we're in this house with these kids. So I want to like what I see, you know, for the sense, I always recommend there is a, the kid version is be happy. And the adult version is joy. And they're from Eden's garden. It's a really awesome, reputable essential oil company. And they've got great fast shipping, but that smell actually makes me happier. So I always do that. 
Tip number eight is listen to some good uplifting music throughout your day. Like there's something about music that just makes everything a little bit more bearable. So when you're doing these mundane tasks that you feel like don't bring you joy, you can put on this music or a podcast or an audiobook, and you can try to keep your sanity that you're not just doing these mundane things over and over and over again. You can make it a little bit fun for yourself. Tip number nine, this is the last one, is to figure out resets. Joy, like joy resets. I don't care what you got to call them. But if you're having a crappy start to your day, you know, if everybody just woke up in a bad mood, we're rushing, we're late to an appointment, whatever. You have to turn that day around. And it's up to you because we as the women set the tone in the home and we definitely set the tone for our kids. It's kind of like a kill them with kindness kind of thing. So I'll do a whole nother episode about you know, turn it around a really crappy day. But for us, a lot of times it's just turning on some really fun music, sending the kids outside to play, mixing it up a little bit, maybe baking something or just sitting on the couch reading books. And it's something that we can just restart our day and say, you know what? No, I'm not letting this whole day turn to crap. I'm going to keep the joy in the home and restart. Sometimes that means asking your kids for forgiveness. If you've just been a total grouch, Sometimes that means stopping and saying, can we just pray that this day turns around and doing it? And that way you're all acknowledging that nobody's in a good mood and we need to turn it around. But figuring out your resets and not being afraid to go to them is a great thing to do to try to cultivate that joy in your house. I've got a really good free download for time blocking on my blog and a great e-workbook if you're going to plan kind of your life to be this joy-filled one that you can cultivate that. And so you can head over to holyhotmessmom.com slash time block, and you can get the free download or holyhotmessmom.com slash home filled with joy to get the whole e-workbook. This episode is over, but there's lots more content for you to check out on my website. Head over to holyhotmessmom.com for all sorts of downloads, posts, and ridiculous stories, as well as the show notes for today's episode. Don't forget to find me on Instagram and Facebook at Holy Hot Mess Mom, as well as in our exclusive Mama Facebook group by searching Holy Hot Mess Mamas. That's Holy Hot Mess, M-A-M-A-S, so we can connect, share, encourage, uplift, laugh, and be virtual best friends. Do you have a topic or something you want to hear about on the show? Shoot me an email at podcast at holyhotmessmom.com. I'd love to hear your suggestions. If you like this episode, would you do me a huge favor and head over to your podcast app and give us a rating and review so that more ladies can find our podcast. The more great reviews we have, the wider we reach with our support, tips, laughs, and encouragement. I would really appreciate it. Until next time.